donating that to the political system. Otherwise, governance and water takes a back seat. Mm -hmm. It's not usually a short-term payoff that, that, that is there. It's the kind of strategic uh, decisions that need advocates who understand. Also, if it is difficult to do the right thing sometimes in local policy, it's even more difficult to bring countries together. So the, the idea of having media networks from more than one country becoming really a community of media people, press people, mm -hmm. who know enough and who become advocates and who are connected with each other, create a layer of, a, of cooperation that strengthens a great deal the eventually needed cooperation on the technical level and on the political level by governments. Mm -hmm. That's why from the outset it was clear that the media should not be just waiting for results of meetings. These meetings are not for uh, policy makers to make uh, agreements after negotiations. The media are very much part of the process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now in Lebanon I must say, unfortunately, we have serious governance problems. It's not a secret that we have an almost paralyzed system of government, mm -hmm. and increasingly so. Fortunately, we don't have a war, but I cannot say that we have a satisfactory uh, state of affairs. Mm -hmm. uh, we, who are involved in politics, uh, most of us anyway, I can speak for myself, are involved in politics uh, for a final end. I mean, politics is a, are a means to an end. The end being basically uh, people's lives, improving economic performance, jobs, social conditions, improving uh, conditions in the countryside. Uh, so uh, yes, water is a problem mm -hmm. and it's very much part of our attempt mm -hmm. to improve governance to improve the political situation in Lebanon. I don't want to get into politics tonight, mm -hmm. but I must say that Lebanon has to get its stuff in order, has to improve uh, its governance structure, has to get its government in place uh, so that it caters to what people want. And mm -hmm. people, the final analysis, they may differ in politics, but they, they agree the on the same thing. They want mm -hmm. better lives, they want better lives for themselves, for others, and for their children mm -hmm. uh, all around. Well, uh, ending off with the media discussion, I want to go back to you, uh, Mr. Phil, uh, in uh, London. Uh, you were giving some suggestions during the uh, first day of the conference to the Blue Peace Media Core Group, uh, which was founded by several reputable uh, journalists and reporters from the Middle Eastern region. What do you think the Core Group should focus on and how effective do you believe their efforts will be? Well, I, I think just before uh, answering that, or perhaps in, in the course of answering that question, Moa, I, I wanted to pick up on my colleague's comment. Uh, both he and I were at the, the conference together. Mm -hmm. um, and, it, you know, nobody better understands the social and personal impact of a finite resource than somebody who is, uh, is deprived of it. And I think that the critical piece here is that the media, with all of its uh, abilities to connect people, mm -hmm. is able to create a link between those who understand what it's like not to have enough walk water to drink and the millions of people around the world for whom that is not a daily reality. Mm -hmm. And so, from uh, my point of view, uh, my view, I think, is, is fairly clear. The media is an enabler. We had a group of journalists, many of whom had, had stepped outside of their normal job description in order to step up to the plate and mm -hmm. say, we're going to disseminate this information. Mm -hmm. We want to reach young people. We want to bring the community into this discussion. And we want to be a bridge between those who have and those who have not, mm -hmm. in order that there can be a wider societal understanding of the impact of a lack of access to clean water and sanitary conditions. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the suggestions I made at the conference, um, which seemed to, to generate some support, was that actually using the media not just as a means of disseminating information, but as a desired destination for many young people as a career, um, that, that it would be possible to enable people to film their daily interaction with this precious resource, mm -hmm. 
-hmm. to have a competition across the region uh, uh, where young people submit their uh, short documentaries, their short films that they, they, they take on their mobile devices, and to judge them and to offer a prize of an internship with a media organisation to report on these kind of documentary type issues. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think that kind of thing, the sort of innovative thinking which engages young people in the issue and also the means of disseminating it, mm -hmm. is, is vitally important. Mm -hmm. You know, our, our conference had, um, I, I'm sure my colleagues from the Strategic Foresight Group will correct me, but somewhere in the region of 150 people. Mm -hmm. But this is an issue that affects millions of people. I, I'm myself am involved in a, an activity in the mm -hmm. Himalaya where we look at uh, access to Himalayan Mr. glacier water, uh, which affects a billion people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And no amount of conferences are ever going to disseminate information to all of those people. Well, Actually, it's the role of the conference, I, want, I think, I want to continue the, this, these uh, kind thought, of meetings. I want to continue this thought with to, you, uh, to, uh, Mr. Uh, Andrews, and with Dr. Sandeep and Dr. Sharab. We have to take our second break for tonight. Excuse me, gentlemen. We will be right back. Please stay tuned. Events. The only constant variable in life is change. Broader perspective. Arguments and counter arguments on our platform. Global Insights. The Globe on our platform. Welcome back to the Middle East stream. There is no doubt that the European experience in water and environmental cooperation is a great example to be followed in the Middle East and other regions too. However, it would be difficult to implement the same scenario in the Middle East as the region is riddled with obstacles. Can the region overcome these obstacles and come together to manage their shared resources? And how can awareness concerning this vital problem be addressed to the Arabian public? This following report answers the mentioned questions. People often associate the Middle East with oil, but in the region's cities, villages and farms, access to a different resource is becoming rather problematic, namely water. Addressing this issue can not only ensure a sustainable future, but will also help create conditions for lasting peace. Switzerland, Germany, France, Luxembourg, the Netherlands, Austria, Liechtenstein, Belgium and Italy are nine European countries that closely and productively cooperate to protect the Rhine River from pollution and monitor the quality and the density of its water flow to ensure its optimal utilization. These European countries constitute a model for peaceful and civilized cooperation despite their ethnic diversity and linguistic differences, as well as a long history of political disputes. This is the message that the Strategic Foresight Group's Blue Peace in the Middle East initiative seeks to convey to the countries of the Middle East. There is no doubt that this European experience in water and environmental cooperation is a great example to be followed in the Middle East and other regions. It is vitally important to apply the same experience in our region to promote cooperation, 
among riparian states are the regional rivers. Cooperation ought to start from the sharing information on the quantities of water flowing down, controlling water pollution, the flow rate, and the prospects of floods and fair distribution of water. However, one ought to mention the political conflicts between countries in the region, which render the talk about water cooperation impossible and a mere scientific luxury, especially in light of the political, military and sectarian conflicts plaguing the region in Syria and Iraq and their extensions to Turkey, Lebanon and Jordan. This is not to mention the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, which makes the talk about water cooperation with Israel and the Arab states pointless given the Israeli occupation of Palestine, Syrian and Lebanese territories and the persistent issue of the Palestinian case in refugees. Yet the Arab participants of the Blue Peace Initiative lately agreed on activating the media committee and developing a website to promote the initiative and the issue of water in the Middle East, in addition to producing a documentary film to help raise awareness on this vital issue. Dr. Sandeep, uh, I want to refer to you first. During the Amman uh, Blue Peace Conference, presentations of successful water cooperation experiences were brought up by several country representatives. Uh, could you brief us about the presentations and maybe highlight the best one which you reckon to be applied in the Middle East? Just now your report mentioned the Ryan River Basin. You also have Danube River Basin in Europe. But I must emphasize that water cooperation is not a European hobby, mm -hmm. nor it is a North American hobby. Mm -hmm. Water cooperation is something that you find being pursued in Africa, in Asia, in Latin America. Now, these are the regions where countries have had extremely difficult relationship, at times conflict, just as you have in the Middle East. You take West Africa, for example. In Senegal River Basin, there were dictatorships in the 1970s and 80s. There were conflicts between Senegal, Guinea, uh, Mauritania, and Mali. And still, these four countries have come together and created the Senegal River Basin Commission, which is uh, one of the best examples in the world of transboundary water cooperation. And all the countries, uh, accept the decisions taken by the Senegal River Basin Commission to whom they have collectively uh, surrendered the decision-making authority in, 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 in the, with regards to the water management. Mm -hmm. But not only that, the Senegal River Basin Commission has been also able to resolve boundary conflicts and ethnic conflicts between Senegal and Mauritania. And since Guinea joined this commission, the border conflict between Senegal and Guinea have been reduced to a large extent. Mm -hmm. So this is a very good example of a region which is economically backward, which is politically full of conflicts, and which has managed to use water cooperation to resolve its other conflicts, like ethnic and, and, and boundary conflicts. Mm -hmm. You take Southern Africa, for instance. In South Africa, you have a water charter, and you have Oran Sanctuary Commission, you have Okavango Commission. We had an executive director of the Okavango Commission in Amman to make presentation. Now, Okavango is a river which flows in the southern part of uh, African continent. It goes through Namibia, Angola, uh, uh, Botswana, uh, and a couple of other countries there. And these countries have had conflicts also. But now, with the cooperation through the Okavango River Commission basis, they not only share and uh, together manage the water resources, but they have been able to create economic prosperity in that region. Mm -hmm. We also had a representative from Mekong River Commission in southeast of Asia, where uh, you have Vietnam, Thailand, Laos, Cambodia, mm -hmm. sharing the big Mekong River with Myanmar or Burma and China. And uh, there again, despite tensions and conflict between uh, China and uh, Vietnam over the South China Sea and the Parsi Islands, you have a uh, very good cooperation taking place between these countries, and this cooperation, in fact, is helping them to resolve other countries. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, European 
uh, river commissions like Ryan and uh, Danube and others are mm -hmm. excellent examples. But you also have uh, the transboundary water cooperation in Africa and uh, 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 Asia, and of course Latin America. Though we couldn't have anyone from Latin America mm -hmm. in a month after, but Latin America is also uh, a continent where uh, a lot of transboundary water cooperation is taking place. Mm -hmm. uh, in Kitikaka between uh, Peru and uh, Bolivia, they have introduced well, uh, the Dr. Dr. Sandeep, let us ask then uh, uh, about this presentation. Let us ask uh, Mr. Phil there before we end off with uh, Dr. Shatta. Uh, Mr. Phil, from each presentation from Africa, Asia, Europe, and the Middle East, it was observed that countries with conflicts have had a difficult relationship on many accounts with uh, some countries taking as much as 100 years to forge cooperation on transboundary water. Uh, do you think it is a wild shot to want the same cooperation in the war-torn Middle Eastern region? Well, um, I think that's a, that's a very good question. I think there are two ways of looking at it. Uh, and I come at this from the point of view of the announcement today about the Palestinian, Palestinian Jordanian and Israeli agreement on cooperation around water resources. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, 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 one rarely hears uh, a sentence in the news today about cooperation uh, in, in the Middle East. And, and here is uh, the, the issue around water resources acting as an opportunity for um, uh, countries to talk to one another and to engage on a scientific, academic and practical level. Mm -hmm. So I think there are two ways of looking at it, Marwa. One is to say uh, everything is far too difficult, the politics are too difficult, um, we can't collaborate on anything else, why should we collaborate on, on this issue of water resource? But the, the reverse position is to say, well actually, here is something that is so fundamental to human life, to economic development, to aspiration, to anything that we might have as human beings on this planet, that actually it offers us an opportunity to collaborate in a way we may never have thought possible before. Mm -hmm. I'm one of life's optimists, mm -hmm. uh, and so my view would be that the announcement today is a first small step in the direction of greater cooperation. Well, uh, we hope and to be uh, optimistic in our turn too, uh, Mr. Uh, Andrews, that uh, why we have uh, to end off right there with uh, Dr. Shatah and ask him, uh, Dr. Shatah, the analysis and the actual experience from around the world that uh, leads to the conclusion that water, peace and security are interdependent. Is there hope for our region to realize that the dangers of ongoing conflicts and uh, focus more on uh, developing the communities of this region by securing their future share of resources, most importantly water. Look, uh, uh, it's not easy to be optimistic when one looks around uh, uh, the neighborhood. The truth is though that Europe, which is now the great example of cooperation on the economy, on water, we have the Rhine Basin, we have other basins. Europe, two generations ago, was in such a mess. Countries were at war, tens of millions of people were getting killed. This is only two generations ago. So yes, there is hope. And I, I, don't, I never believed in the Arab exception or Muslim exception or somehow this region is doomed because it's intrinsically different. I think there is a drama unfolding. That drama will eventually and hopefully uh, faster than some people think move to a better spot where both their domestic uh, governance and cooperation will, will, will start on the right track. Uh, I must say also that uh, we already see bright spots even when things look not necessarily very good. As an example, I mentioned Lebanon and the political paralysis and mm -hmm. the absence of a normal government these days. Mm -hmm. uh, this morning, um, I attended an event mm -hmm. by a group, like a three dozen, a group of three dozen uh, civil society personalities, very active, very prominent, uh, uh, important in their own rights, in their companies or in their uh, professions, got together and uh, in the last uh, couple of years uh, put together a, a vision for the water sector in Lebanon. Mm -hmm. These are not government officials. They don't want to keep uh, compete with government or eliminate government, but they're complementing the government and when the government is not normal that their role becomes even more important. That's this is something that was even attended by the President of the Republic. Mm -hmm. But I'm trying to say 
is that people at the end will drive the process. Mm -hmm. And people want the right thing. This is a difficult period in our lives, but I'm hopeful. I'm also hopeful, as, as our friend from London, also hopeful because uh, the world has changed. Information and information technology is bringing together people and forces in ways that 20 years ago were thought impossible. impossible. And now it's not only about one television station airing a documentary, it's about thousands and thousands of people who are able to connect and who are able to play a role in disseminating mm -hmm. and sharing uh, common interests. And we're seeing that. Uh, we're seeing that in the media, we're seeing that in uh, interest groups uh, who are forging alliances and, and, and creating communities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is something that's new. Mm -hmm. I believe that is going to be a force to move our societies, not only on water and water cooperation, but on everything else in the right direction. Mm -hmm. It may look bleak if we look around the block or look at, uh, you know, behind the, the Syrian border, but the truth is we're not different. As I said, Europe two generations ago looked mess. bleak, mm -hmm. and today we look at Europe for examples the same can be said about other parts of the world, Latin America, Asia. It's not only Europe, the world is moving on, and I have no mm -hmm. doubt that we will eventually also hopefully. move on. Hopefully so. I want to thank you very much, Dr. Mohamed Shatta, former Lebanese uh, Minister of Finance, for being with us uh, tonight. And I want to thank Dr. Uh, Sandeep Bastakar, President of the Strategic Foresight Group, for joining us too. Thank you very much, sir. And a special thanks to Mr. Phil Andrews, Chief Executive Officer at Get Energy. Thank you very much, gentlemen. That was our show for tonight. Thank you for watching, and have a great night.